The world's largest nuclear weapon would vaporize everything within five kilometers and kill nearly everyone within nine. At 20 kilometers, most buildings would collapse and many would catch fire. Everyone would be injured and many would die. At 50 kilometers, people would see the flash and approach their windows before the pressure wave arrived, sending shards of glass into them. Russia has released long secret footage of the bomb's detonation, the largest explosion in history. The parachute allowed the pilots to travel 45 kilometers before the explosion. They had been given a 50% chance of survival. The shock wave caught the plane, causing it to drop a kilometer, but it landed safely. A mushroom cloud rose 70 kilometers high and 100 kilometers wide. But far more dangerous weapons have now been deployed and they raise the risk of a nuclear war that could suddenly end civilization. There are 15,000 nuclear weapons, mostly in the US and Russia. If you live in a city with a military base, an airport, or a major university, there's a missile pointed at you. A Trident submarine can carry a hundred hydrogen bombs, a thousand times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. And nowhere is safe. Even a war between India and Pakistan, two of the smallest nuclear powers, would threaten us all. Within two weeks, the smoke would spread around the earth. And at an altitude of 30 kilometers, it never rains, so the smoke would remain for years, blocking the sun. Crops would be devastated, and it's estimated that one to two billion people would starve to death. In a war between the US and Russia, Civilization would be destroyed, and any survivors would face a very dark, difficult world. Scientists warned that this nuclear winter could arrive suddenly, sparked by new nuclear weapons. In the 1980s, the public was very aware of this risk. When the nuclear arms race was revived, a quarter of a million people protested in London, and a million in New York. A dramatic arms reduction followed, which may well have prevented catastrophe. President Reagan said, a great many reputable scientists are telling us that such a war could end up in no victory for anyone because we would wipe out the Earth as we know it. And Gorbachev said that learning of nuclear winter from Russian and American scientists was a great stimulus to us, to people of honor and morality, to act. But in 2020, scientists set the doomsday clock closer to Armageddon than ever. A hundred seconds to midnight. The power that mankind has generated is completely at variance with the seriousness with which it's understood. How else can we wake up the Democrats, the Republicans, the independents, the millionaires, the billionaires, the media owners who carry on their life as though it's the, they're on the Titanic? about ready to hit an iceberg, and they're not worried. And a new missile threatens to make up the time. The Tsar Bomba was all threat. It had to be carried by a plane and was too easily shot down. This new tactical nuclear missile is the polar opposite. It's designed less as a deterrent and more to be used. It makes the unthinkable thinkable. A simulation by Princeton University shows how one tactical nuclear missile could lead to Armageddon based on real targets and fatality estimates. During a conventional conflict, Russia launches a nuclear warning shot, and NATO retaliates with a single tactical nuclear airstrike. As the nuclear threshold is crossed, fighting escalates to a tactical nuclear war in Europe. Russia sends 300 warheads via aircraft and missiles to hit NATO bases and troops, and NATO responds with 180 warheads. With Europe destroyed, NATO launches 600 strategic nuclear missiles aimed at Russian nuclear forces. Before losing its weapons, Russia launches missiles from silos, vehicles, and submarines. And to inhibit recovery, both sides target major cities and economic centers. 
Within a few hours, there are 90 million casualties and the impact will escalate dramatically. It's this risk of crossing the nuclear threshold that led the US to completely eliminate tactical nuclear missiles from its army and navy and almost all overseas locations. Britain and France eliminated them entirely. But the new US tactical missile has escalated tensions. Even one missile would cause many thousands of civilian deaths and like victims of the Hiroshima bomb, most would die slowly over days or weeks. Hypersonic missiles travel at over five times the speed of sound. Engineers have overcome challenges including temperatures of over 2,000 degrees from air resistance. Russia claims its new avant-garde missile travels at Mach 27, that's 33,000 kilometers per hour, and hypersonic missiles are unstoppable. There are two main types. Hypersonic cruise missiles are powered all the way to their targets. Unlike conventional jet engines, which use fans, scramjets use shock waves to compress air for combustion. Hypersonic glide vehicles are launched on rockets and use the air to maneuver, keeping their targets secret until the last moment. Current defense systems are based on missiles with predictable trajectories, and hypersonic missiles can be maneuvered to avoid them. While traditional strategic missiles can be detected around 15 to 30 minutes before impact, hypersonic weapons reduce this to a few minutes. And that's worse than it sounds. If Russia launches traditional nuclear missiles at the US, satellites will pick them up soon after they break through the clouds. NORAD will receive reports and confirm that an attack is underway. In 1979, Zygniew Brzezinski received the call in the middle of the night and had three minutes to decide whether to wake the president. This was no drill. The Pentagon's National Military Command Center and the alternate National Military Command Center in Fort Ritchie, Maryland, all showed the same thing. The Soviets had launched more than 200 submarine-launched ballistic missiles. Following standard procedures, the launch control centers for America's 550 Minutemen 3 and 450 Minutemen 2 missiles, missiles whose combined warheads represented approximately 55,000 times the explosive power of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, were given a preliminary warning to prepare for a counterattack. The crews of the SAC Ready Alert bombers and tankers were moved to their aircraft, each armed with up to 20 nuclear-tipped AGM-69 short-range attack missiles, and start their engines. And at least 10 F-106 Delta Dart fighter interceptors were launched. U.S. National Security Advisor Big New Brzezinski later recalled the event. He was awakened at 3 a.m. by a call from his military assistant, Major General William Odom, who informed him that 250 Soviet ballistic missiles were headed to the United States. Brzezinski knew that the president's decision time to order retaliation was just three to seven minutes. They were still waiting for satellite confirmation of the launch, and Brzezinski did not want to call the president until that confirmation, but asked to confirm that SAC was launching its planes. A moment later, Odom called back to inform him that the command center was reporting that the Soviets had now launched over 2,200 missiles, an all-out nuclear attack. He chose not to wake his wife. If the world was going to end in half an hour, he would let her go quietly in her sleep. Moments before he picked up the phone to call President Jimmy Carter and recommend massive retaliation, Odom called a third time. Raw data from the early warning satellites and ground-based radar were seeing nothing. It was, apparently, a false alarm. And it turned out to be a malfunctioning NORAD training program. If Russia also launches missiles from submarines, they will arrive sooner. They're not accurate enough to destroy U.S. missile silos, but the president may be killed, with the decision to strike back falling to surviving officials. Assuming the president is still alive, eight minutes remain to assemble him and his advisors, brief them, and make a decision. To save time, nuclear launch codes are carried with the president at all times. The case also includes instructions for an emergency broadcast system. If the entire process from alert to briefing has taken only 12 minutes, the president will have around two minutes to decide whether to launch hundreds of nuclear missiles, killing millions of civilians. If he does, the orders will be transmitted from the basement of the Pentagon, and the launch sequence will take up the remaining time. With hypersonic missiles, the warning time will be cut to around five minutes. 
threats and the government could be eliminated before it could respond. To allow for this, nuclear controls might be shared with the military and weapons could be dispersed around the world. This would increase the risk of a catastrophic accident or nuclear weapons falling into the hands of terrorists. An alternative would be automatic counter-strikes, with missiles launched as soon as a warning is received. At least two previous technical faults would have caused full-scale nuclear war. As hypersonic missiles can't be shot down, they raise the incentive to strike first. And it would be difficult to know if missiles were nuclear-armed, so a relatively small strike would cause a nuclear counter-strike. Russia, China and the US have successfully tested hypersonic weapons and are spending billions in a race to deploy them in large numbers over the next few years. Russia will soon test a salvo of hypersonic missiles from a warship, which would reduce flight time even further. And the escalation that leads to a nuclear launch decision could soon happen automatically. Thousands of experts warn that fully autonomous weapons could spark wars. Many countries support a ban, but a few are blocking it and developing increasingly autonomous weapons. Cheap to mass produce, huge fleets could emerge around the world, escalating tensions. And as the pace of warfare increases, so does the risk of an apocalyptic accident. One idea is to implant the nuclear launch codes next to the heart of a volunteer. Before killing millions, the president would need to kill one person with a butcher's knife. Other world leaders face a similarly stark choice. Set a course for disarmament or be complicit in a, quote, situation that will lead to catastrophe sooner rather than later. 86 countries have signed a ban treaty which comes into force this month, a historic victory driven by people like you. Joe Biden will soon review America's nuclear weapons program. Should he spend over a trillion dollars renewing it? Or should he work with other leaders towards a nuclear-free world? And we'll lead not merely by the example of our power, but by the power of our example. Will we meet our obligations and pass along a new and better world to our children? Please leave a comment and join us on Patreon to help build the public pressure that can overpower our most urgent existential threat. Thank you.